Hey folks, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and today I've got a knife for you that is simply, I think it, awesome is an overused word, so maybe it's not awesome, but it's knocking on that door and it's knocking hard. And it's, you know, a budget knife. I made it to Blade Show this year for my very first time. Thank you to Gridomatic for that, for, for letting me, well, paying my way to get there. Of course, I paid some expenses, but hey, the flight was covered by Gridomatic. And um, what I really thought was my main thing that I wanted to do while I was there was I wanted to find some knife makers that were making well-priced knives that I'd never heard of before. And it turns out very few people have heard of AccuStrike. Uh, if you've heard of AccuStrike, you've probably heard of the first product that uh, Dwayne, the owner of AccuStrike, uh, it's a... Uh, Dwayne and his wife, they live in New Jersey, I believe, and they started this company uh, because he wanted to develop a tool that could be used to help determine if uh, during practice fighting with knives uh, for law enforcement and those kinds of people, uh, you know, because they got to prepare to, you know, <laughs> defend themselves if need be with a knife as a last resort. And in the training, things just weren't going the way he thought it should. And he developed this knife that it lights up and makes a sound when you get cut with it. Of course, it's got a plastic blade uh, with rounded edges. You're not actually going to cut to bleed. But what was fundamentally different about this is it requires a certain amount of pressure either a stabbing pressure um, right on the end of the knife and then it would push it in and the light and vibration would go off or a certain amount of pressure on the blade pushing the blade back before it would go off and so if the device went off it means you got cut <laughs> and so otherwise you know the training with just dummy knives you know that are rubber or whatever you might feel that you got hit or cut or something touched but you don't know how hard it was. You don't know if it was hard enough to get cut or actual damage or not. So that device called the Mimic is an awesome device. As soon as I saw it, I saw it for gaming purposes. I figured, man, this thing would be great. You know, you put in uh, wireless technology in there and you could have training where it live keeps track of a certain number of strikes. And once you've got a certain number of strikes, you win, right? Or cuts or stabs or whatever whatever you want to call the strikes. So I thought that's kind of cool. Maybe somebody will do that. But right now it's basically a tool used for enthusiasts, but mainly for law enforcement and uh, military enforcement, that kind of stuff, training. Once that thing was successful, now he's got other things. He's got these sticks that he uses for stick fighting uh, and devices for them, training with them, this weighted system, really, really cool stuff and knives that he's designed. And this is the road trip. And it looks funky, it looks silly, it looks ugly, it doesn't make any sense when you first look at it, except for to the guy who's got, and hopefully you've got, or gal, who's got an experienced eye and can figure out this thing is simply awesome. I don't know if he put a piece of, uh, you know, silly putty or rubber in his hand and he just held it and, you know, came up with a shape, but your hand goes in here and my hand, it fits perfectly. And, you know, I've given this to my wife. She's got totally different size hands. She goes, that fits perfectly. Uh, and so I've given it to several people to hold and they, that thing fits perfectly. So this funny looking knife is a perfect knife. For road trip, uh, I didn't ask him. I'm going to go it on a limb and I'm going to ask him afterwards. I think he called it road trip because if you're going on a road trip in the United States, this guy is going to be legal in every state. <laughs> We've got a two and a half inch blade, roughly, and it's a locking knife. Uh, it's a budget knife. And I think you should listen to this review. I've seen one other person review this and he's got a channel. Uh, the, the video has been out for a year and it's got, you know, 150 views or something. So very few people know about this. You can buy it directly from AccuStrike, that's the name of the company, or you can buy it from Amazon, and there's other places, there's even a Canadian vendor, so I'll have links down below. The only places I saw for this is in North America, so if you want to buy this, 
Uh, you can only buy it in North America that I know of. If you know of other places where you can buy this knife, send me a comment with the link. You're, it, the comment won't automatically get posted, but it will get put into my queue for me to review. And if it's uh, you know if it's actually a link for buying this knife, I'll make that link live so that other people who live in your country will be able to get this as well. So let me know about that. So this is a liner lock that fits the hand perfectly. And I think you want to watch this review because it's coming at you right now. Uh, for the last couple videos, I've been showing the size. Here's an Ontario Rat 1. That's the larger of the two knives. And next to it, let's line up these pivots. Let's, let's turn it flat, the pivot point. You can see this is a smaller knife, <laughs> but the handle is still quite a good size. The thickness of the handle this way helps to fill the hand, and you know the length of the handle works very, very well. It's got some unique things to it. The thumb studs are the actual um, stops, stop pins. As you can see, there's no stop pin in here, and there's no hidden stop pin inside either. So the thumb studs are nice and thick and beefy, and there's a spot you know milled into the handle scales right here into the liners. When you open it up, it's a stop pin, and it holds it very, very well. There's no blade play side to side, up and down. It's locked in very, very well. Now, the handle shape is funny looking, and it's quite funny looking, but it fits the hand so very well. One finger wraps here, one finger wraps here, one finger wraps here, index finger wraps here. Your thumb sits in this bowl. This bowl's got jimping on the liners, and then jimping on the spine of the blade. And you know, when you wrap your hand onto it, right or left-handed, pocket clip can go both sides, either way. And they've got a fixed pin for that instead of a free spinning, just like on the pivot. <laughs> just a lot of good designs. It just fits in there so very, very well. Either hand just rides in there very well. This is the most secure knife of a folding knife that you can hold. When you've got this grip in it, this knife, you know, it's got to be a very, very strange situation for this knife to come unlocked from your hand. It's a solid, solid grip. The thing is, even in a reverse grip, now your index finger goes up there and your pinky's in here, the reverse grip is awesome as well. I thought, there's no way the reverse grip is going to feel good on this knife, and it feels so awesome. Look at that, the round part inside of your palm. Now this part just fits right in there perfectly. It's the best locking reverse grip. <laughs> you know, it's just a very, very good design. Uh, 8CR13 MOV stainless steel, which is a reasonable budget steel. No problem at all for that. You've got a hollow grind, which means you can sharpen this knife many, many times before it starts getting thicker behind the grind, or appreciably thicker behind the grind. Uh, it's got a clip point here, a little bit of a you know false wedge right there. Uh, and it's not heavy. You've got a little bit of skeletonizing in there. You can see the two holes on this side, and I'll show you the insides a little bit later on. It's got some nice color touches. You've got some blue anodized um, on the pins, on the pin here, and on the uh, pocket clip pin. It looks really good. Um, let me show you the pictures of the inside right now. So as you saw, it's got phosphor bronze washers, which are just fine, because watch this. It, <laughs> you can't have a knife open faster than that. That's as fast as a knife can open. Like, I mean, physics says that's as fast as she goes. Uh, <laughs> it just opens very well. And when you go to close it, you know, you push it aside and you easily close the knife. It's not perfectly centered, but centering is quite good. And right or left-handed works just fine, even though the thumb stud, it also, you know, works as a stop pin for when you close it, but it still has good access for you to open your knife, left or right-handed. Um, it's just a very well-designed knife. Now, as you can see, the, it works as a stop pin just on the one side. On the left side, you can, re I mean, the right side, you can easily get your thumb behind there. But even if you're left-handed, like I showed you, it's not hard to deploy that blade, you know, with the left hand. Uh, 
So it's just as left friendly as anything else is. The lock release, you have the great access to the lock release right there. It's a little bit of jimping on that liner lock right there. And it's a well designed knife. Lock up is just slightly after what I want a brand new knife to start at. Not bad at all. And, um, you know, like I said, the alignment's not bad when it's closed. There's no lanyard hole. You could tie some lanyard around that back pin there. If you do that, uh, tie it really tight. Otherwise, the tip of this blade's going to nip at it. So you're going to have to have fairly thin paracord if you want to do that. Um, I just never, well, not never. I almost never use uh, lanyards anyway, so I don't miss that at all. The pocket clip is designed a little bit like the um, spider coast, you know, with the spoon back here. You know, it comes up, flattens out. It's perfectly designed for going into uh, a pocket and holding on. So you slide it on and see the spoon goes over that edge and it fits there and then it comes over, locks into place here. You've got about an inch, about two and a half centimeters sticking out just under both of those measurements actually. And you know, it doesn't look bad there. When you go to take it out, you get good grip on there and just pull it out. It's a well-made knife and looks good, feels good. Um, the only flaw in it that I found so far and no, I don't miss ball bearings. I've been doing this for three and a half years, and when I first started, ball bearings were exceedingly rare. And now, washers are exceedingly rare. Almost everybody's using ball bearings. But as you saw me flipping this open, you know, it's fast, it's smooth. You don't need ball bearings you know, to make a knife good. The only time you need ball bearings is when you've got a designer who doesn't know what he's doing. But if you've got a good design... You know, washers work just fine for deploying a knife. The only thing I wish they would have done better is I would wish that the plunge here would have been uh, quicker so that the blade doesn't stay thick for so far before it gets down to where the hollow grind is thin enough to sharpen. They should have taken the sharpness trial and made it up, come up to about here. Because what you have is an ugly end right here. Uh, it's actually flat right there. The end of the blade there is flat. It can't cut anything until you are about where my fingernail is. So there's my fingernail. And so there's a whole section of the blade that can't cut. Well, maybe it's not quite that much, but I'll show you a picture of it from this angle looking down. You can see this rough flat spot. And so, you know, you can't sharpen it right to the end of the sharpness trail because the blade's just too thick. You'd have to go on a very steep angle. But if I sharpen this thing, if I resharpen this thing now at 20 degrees per side, it'll never get sharp right at the end here. So easy solution for me is just to move the sharpness trail up a little bit or just live with it because it's really cosmetic. You know, I can still cut everything I want to cut. I can still do everything I want to do. Not a problem at all. And it's a small knife. Yeah, it's a small knife, but it can still cut 95% of what you want to cut on an EDC knife. Can this thing take care of seatbelts in an emergency? No problem. Can this thing protect you against a rabid dog? I think so. This thing can protect you, and it can certainly do all the EDC. Okay, let's say 99% of the EDC you're going to come across, and you can take it almost anywhere. It's got the size to allow you for almost anywhere. As long as locking knives are allowed, this knife is going to be a good choice. So before we get too far ahead of ourselves now, let's zoom in a little bit and give you guys all of the different measurements. When this goes away, I'm done with the measurements, but I'm going to zoom in a little bit to do this. Okay, so I already told you, uh, 8CR13 MOV stainless steel. Rockwell hardness is around 57 that's good for a budget knife. G10 handle scales, uh, hollow grind, clip point. The weight of this knife, 107 grams, 3.75 ounces. So it's light. The sharpness from the factory, 165. That's 165 grams of pressure to cut through a piece of monofilament. Uh, 200 is considered sharp. Anything under 200 is even sharper. So that's good. 
the cutting edge length, so tip of the handle to where the cutting edge ends, 6.76 centimeters, 2.66 inches. The length of the blade, so tip to the closest spot on the handle up here, 6.1 centimeters, 2.4 inches. The blade thickness, 2.8 millimeters, that's 0 0.11. That's just a little bit under an eighth of an inch. The blade depth, that's this measurement here, 2.7 centimeters, 1.07 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, about an inch down this way, 0.52 millimeters, which is 0 0.02 inches. So it's just almost exactly what I want it to be. I want an EDC knife to be around half a millimeter thick, just behind the edge, and this is 0.52, so very, very close. The grind angle. On this side here where it says road trip, the grind angle is 15.6 degrees, and on this side it is 23.3 degrees. And while that's not great numbers, that's pretty much the industry standard. <laughs> they just don't sharpen them 20 degrees per side. Uh, and I've mentioned why a number of times in many of my videos, and it's really not that big a deal. When I sharpen this knife, it's going to get 20 degrees per side, and it's going to be awesome. And right now, it's still quite good. The handle length, 10.65 centimeters, 4.2 inches. The uh, grip area, I'm going to call it the same number, or even more, because you can grip it, you know, <laughs> here's your thumb gripping right here, and you're gripping past the end of the handle, and that's your standard grip. You can wrap your thumb around if you want to, and it's still a very secure grip, but either way. So the grip and the handle length, same thing. The handle thickness, 1.22 centimeters, 0.48 of an inch. That's not counting the pocket clip, so very good. The handle depth, it's biggest right about here, 3.2 centimeters, one and a quarter inches. When the knife is closed, it's largest right here and that is 3.8 centimeters, one and a half inches. And the total length of this knife, and I did it again. I forgot to get the inches. It's on the top of the screen, 16.4 centimeters, which is that many inches. <laughs> I'll have to take care of Bandit, and I'll be right back to talk about more of the pros and cons and summarize this thing down. Those of you who are wondering, here's my Bandit. He's such a lovely dog, isn't he? What a great dog. So Bandit, it's time for you not to bug me. I'm doing a video right now, okay? So let's move this table back and finish off this information about this knife. The pros and cons on this knife. The pros, the design is awesome. Another pro, if you buy this knife, you're gonna support a mom and pop shop in the United States of America. So that's a good thing. Although the knife is made in China, uh, it's made to his specifications and it's done very, very well. The price for this knife, it's in the low 40s. Uh, I can get it for, you can get it for $41.05 on Amazon. You can buy it directly from the uh, owner of the business, Dwayne, uh, $42.95. That's his price. In Canada, it's $57.99, that's Canadian dollars, at HeroOutdoors.com. And if I find other links, I'll put them down below. Is it worth that price? I think so. Um, it's a very comfortable knife. I've carried it in my pocket. Uh, I got it at Blade Show back in end of June, and middle of June actually, and I've carried this knife a lot. Very, very comfortable and everyone I've shown looks at it and goes, what the heck is that? And then they feel it and, you know, they like it. It's a good knife. I think you're going to like it if you get this for your collection. Um, I like the blue standoffs. That's a nice touch. You know, just a little bit of accent of some artistry in with the functionality on it. Um, the weight is good. The handle shape is good. The liner lock release, very good. Lockup is solid. Uh, washers, no problem there. Uh, it's a really good knife. The only things that, uh, you know, I really don't like is, you know, the sharpness choil, like I talked about, and the grind angle isn't done as well as it should have been done from the factory, but it's done well enough that it is sharp from the factory. And, you know, it's just going to be a little bit of work the first time you go to sharpen it if you want to get it to 20 degrees per side exactly. And, um, you know, that's the price you pay for getting budget knives. Like, like I say, all the budget knives are like that except for a very, very tiny minority, stay close to 20 degrees per side from the factory. 
unique things like the thumb stud is the stop pin. That's really cool. And, you know, I love the hollow grind. It's not getting enough love these days. Not enough people are making knives with hollow grinds. And that's a hollow grinds are a really good thing because you get that thin behind the grind for way more times before, you know, the knife starts getting thick behind the grind. Very comfortable. Good knife. If you're in the market for one of these, I've got the links for you down below. Uh, t take a look at that website anyways. Even if you're just interested in that Mimic, you can buy it directly from him as well. It's a great testing device. I had it in my hand. I played with it. Uh, he's got these weighted sticks for stick fighting training. Uh, it's just a little attachment. You make you provide your own stick, and there's like a six-inch attachment thing that you put over a stick to help your muscles get strengthened. All kinds of really cool stuff at his site. And other knives. He's got knives, you know, that got magnets. So you can put them someplace, and it's going to stay there. And a couple other cool knives. And, oh, I so hope that I get the bad penny. That was in the package that got taken by uh, Canada Border Services Agency. They've got a knife called the Bad Penny, and that's an awesome looking and very functional knife. And uh, when I get that one, I'll be doing a review of that for sure. And if I don't get it back from the government, I'll be buying another one. It's just that good. Uh, so thanks for watching my videos. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And if you're a Patreon supporter, I thank you very much. And if you're not yet, consider becoming a Patreon supporter to help out this channel. Uh, it does cost money to bring these reviews to you, and my whole reason for being is to give you guys good information about good knives so that you can make informed decisions for yourself. And remember guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye now.